Twilisi sahiltiyor sam katro akademiye sadece lekciye biz parklepsi estumra patayın demiyen vampleri patayın demiyeni kahvalt Amerikalı şerte buluştu ate biz kültürü sadece sakartoluşu misim aksine biz tema iko komiksi grafikli novela perspektiva da potansiyeli. Tavut patayın demiyeni kahvalt komikse biz tekste biz matrabe biz novelle biz avtori da iki aler tip popüler oluy komiks signis avtori ya sebe patayın demeyin hiç şey mukmede var şey muy parla bam kahut komikse bit iki ya sebe fotografiye taşırat amuşave sosyal ur tematik as tavis paton amuşave So comic books are sequential art, which means it's art that's in a sequence. So examples of sequential art are cave paintings, hieroglyphics, uh, Chinese writing, Greek and Roman sculpture, uh, sequential paintings, block prints, which are wood block prints, and then comics. So, for example, in Chinese writing, this is the the word for horse, but it comes from a picture of a horse, and you can see the the evolution. And here are three more Chinese characters and their evolution from a picture of a river to the word for a river. So in a way, all Chinese uh, and Japanese writings are actually little pictures in sequence. Now on to Egyptian hieroglyphics. Each word in Egyptian hieroglyphics is actually a picture, but these are actually pictures that tell a story. So maybe this is the first comic book ever, I don't know. <laughs> this is from the Mayan culture in South America, which is also, these are pictures that tell a story. Uh, this is in Italy, so these are series of paintings, oil paintings, on the walls and the ceiling that also tell a story. This is a door that is carved, and the, the same thing, each panel is one story and it completes an entire story. Now, when you think of comics, you think of something that's drawn by hand and you think of cartoons usually. Right. This is a political cartoon, and political cartoons started, as you might know, in in Europe in the 1800s. But political cartoons serve a very specific purpose. Political cartoons are a commentary on life. Uh, 
And the thing about political cartoons is they're one panel, so they are not sequential. They're just one panel. All right, so this is Lincoln and another guy tearing the, the United States apart over the issue of slavery. Okay. But comic books began with newspaper comic strips. So in America, every day you read the newspaper, and when you're finished reading the heavy stuff, the news, business, politics, you get to the back page and you get your comic strips. So on weekdays, on Monday through Friday, they're in black and white, and on Sunday, they're in color. <laughs> And in the in the comics on the Sunday in the in the daily comics, these are many different stories and many different artists. And you might not know, but some very very famous uh, movies and cartoons come from comic strips. For example, this one right here, this is Peanuts, this is Charlie Brown, which you might know, but that comes from a comic book. And the other famous one that comes from comic strips is Garfield, who's right here. Okay. So in the 1930s, comic strips were in the newspaper and they were very popular. These are two popular ones, Phantom and Valiant, Prince Valiant. Now most comic strips are only a few panels and you don't need to read it day to day or week to week. You can just read it once and it's finished. Usually it just it tells one joke and then that's it. It's over. But things like the Phantom and Prince Valiant tell a long story, so you have to follow it every day. So here's how the comic book was created. One newspaper editor had a really good idea. He said, I'm going to take all of the old, old uh, comics of Phantom and Valiant and instead of putting them in a newspaper in the back, they took them and they put all Phantom into one paper from like old copies of Phantom into one paper and filled the whole thing with just Phantom. It was very smart because it didn't cost anything. All these were old issues that were already drawn, so this is what we would call a reprint. So what the editors did was they filled a whole page with one comic book, well, one comic strip. They folded it up and they put it on the newspaper rack right next to the news. So the newspapers were here and then there was one new one that was just comics of one title. So how do you think it sold? How do you think it how do you think this did for the readers and for the newspapers? Do you think it was popular? 
Yeah. It was very popular because people who didn't want to read the news, they had a second option. They could just read the comics. So the newspaper companies started printing these back issues, these reprints. They started printing them very rapidly. And very quickly, what do you think happened? What do you think happened with these old uh, cartoons and comics? What? Yeah, they ran out. Exactly, they ran out. They ran out, and so they needed something new. So the newspapers started calling up people and saying, "Can you draw like new mater new material?" <laughs> and that's how comic books were born. And if you look, a folded newspaper is the same size as a modern comic book, because it's exactly the same size. So, in 1938, you've got Joel. Siegel and uh, Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster, who uh, who drew and wrote Action Comics number one. Who knows what what character was in Action Comics number one? Raise your hand. Superman, right. Superman. So Action Comics number one was Superman. And Action Comics is still printed today. This is Action Comics. Now, two other guys, Bob Kane and Bill Finger, uh, wrote Detective Comics in 1939. And what character was in Detective Comics? Batman, yes. And Detective Comics is still printed today. And Detective Comics is, uh, that's where you get the company DC Comics. Mm -hmm. Detective Comics, DC Comics. Right. And Batman and Superman were ridiculously popular. I mean, they sold and sold and sold and sold like crazy. So after that, right at the same time, there were other companies. And how, you probably all know Marvel Comics, right? Marvel Comics created Spider-Man, Iron Man, Captain America, Wolverine, Thor, Hulk, Deadpool, Avengers, everybody. Also the same time period, 1939. So all these movies that people are watching now, Deadpool and all this stuff, they all go back to 1939. Well, not all of them. Well, many of them. Okay. There are other comic book companies besides Marvel and DC. The most famous uh, alternative comic book company is Image. Image was formed when seven of Marvel's top artists and writers got sick of working at Marvel and they walked out and they formed their own company. So now I'm going to tell you how a comic book is made because a comic book is a collaborative art. Unlike 
painting or many other art forms, you can do it. You really cannot do it completely by yourself unless you're a very special person. <laughs> Okay. So first of all, you need to draw the pencils. Most comic books are drawn in pencils first. And then next, you draw on top of the pencils, you draw inks on top. And this is often done by a different person. The penciler and the inker are different. Uh, you also have to add color. So on top of the inks, you have a separate person who's going to do the color. And you can see it goes like that. And then there's another very important thing which is neglected. Uh, people don't appreciate the fourth step, but these are the word balloons. Yeah, in comic books, when people speak, the text is in a little bubble, and the bubble has to point to the person's mouth. Okay. And of course, I've forgotten the most, in my opinion, the most important person in the creative team, and that is the writer. <laughs> So basically, you need a writer, a penciler, an inker, a colorist, and a letterer. Five people. <laughs> now, comic books can be in any genre. Superheroes are a popular genre, but comic books can be in any genre. So comic books can be horror, they can be fantasy, they can be romance, they can even be non-fiction. Basically anything. So this is a, a graphic novel called American Born Chinese, and it's the story of an American boy coming to America and growing up. American born Chinese. <laughs> and this is mostly autobiographical, mostly autobiographical. Yeah. Uh, so here is more genres. So basically any genre can be drawn in sequential art form. So right now in Hollywood, comic books are extremely popular because of people like this. Uh, they all came from comic books. Superman, Captain America, all from comic books. Here are some of the movies that have come from comic books. Have any of you seen any of these movies? Does, do any of you have a movie up here that you really love? Raise your hand if there's one movie here that you really love. Which, which one? Which one? Deadpool, yeah. Anyone else? Iron Man, yeah. What else? X-Men? Ghost Rider? Iron Man? Hellboy? Yeah. Anybody watching The Walking Dead? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Walking Dead is from Robert Kirkman's uh, comic book, The Walking Dead. 
The first issue was black and white. And the first issue of the comic book is very similar to the first episode of the TV show. And if you'll notice, the writer, Robert Kirkman, of the comic book is the executive producer of the TV show. Anyone watching Daredevil these days on Netflix? Yeah? Yeah, me too. I stay up way too late. <laughs> okay, Daredevil is from Marvel Comics. Anyone watching Arrow? Yeah, this guy's watching all of them. <laughs> uh, that is DC Comics, that's Green Arrow. And DC Comics, that is Green Arrow. Anyone watching Flash? Yeah. yeah, okay, that's also DC Comics. Okay, so there's another company called Dark Horse. Dark Horse made their start by buying the license to Hollywood movies and turning them into comic books. But they had such a good relationship with Hollywood then that their comics started turning into movies. Yeah. So, anyone familiar with Sin City? Yeah. So, Sin City was originally a comic book uh, by Frank Miller, who is one of the greatest American graphic novel writers and artists. Do you know what, what else has Frank Miller written? Does anyone know? Dark Knight Returns. Sorry? Dark Knight Returns. Dark Knight Returns. What, other mov what movie did Frank Miller write? 300. 300, right. What other movie did Frank Miller write? Watchmen. Watchmen? No, that's Alan Moore. He's British. We can't talk about him. <laughs> uh, has anyone seen the original... Robocop from 1995? Yeah, so Frank Miller also wrote that one. Yeah. Okay, so many, have, many people have heard the term comic book and also the word graphic novel, and it's hard to understand which is which. Essentially, they're the same. Essentially, they're the same. Yeah. The big difference, number one, is that comic books are thin like this. They're maybe 25 or 30 pages. Mm -hmm. They come out once a month. And you can go to a comic book shop and get a subscription so that it automatically comes to your comic book shop. Comic books are full of advertisements for toys and video games and movies. And because they're short, the story continues usually from one issue to the next issue to the next issue. On the other hand, there are graphic novels like this. Graphic novels have no advertisements and they're thicker like a book. <coughs> And it has one complete story, so when you're finished, it's, you're finished. Okay. In the 1980s, though, the comic book companies figured out a new way to make money. What they would do is they would take four comic book issues, like Superman number one, two, three, and four, and they would they would reprint them together as a book. Like this is a reprint of 
The last man, number one, two, three, and four. <laughs> so it looks exactly like a graphic novel. It's thick, it has no advertisements, and it, it tells one story. <laughs> but these reprints are popular because sometimes it's hard to find the comic books. They, they're, if they were printed a long time ago, it's hard to find them. So it, the reprint is more durable and easier to order like online or something. A lot of people would call this a graphic novel, but if you're like really an expert at comic books, it has a different name. <laughs> It's called a trade paperback. A trade paperback. I don't know why it's called a trade paperback, but you'll see it on the internet as TPB, trade paperback. Trade paperback. Yeah. It, it just means they reprinted old issues and sold it as a book like this. So most of the very famous graphic novels are actually reprints of old comic book issues. But the word graphic novel became popular when America's greatest comic book artist, Will Eisner, he didn't want to be associated with comic books anymore because comic books are thought of to be for kids. <laughs> Will Eisner. He wanted his, his piece of art to be in bookstores instead of comic book stores, so he created the word graphic novel so it would sound like higher culture. Okay. Um, so <coughs> graphic novels come in, as I've said, all genres, all uh, types of stories and all shapes and sizes. Uh, this is one of my uh, favorite graphic novel artists. His name is David Mack and he has his series called Kabuki. Many comic book artists are working digitally. They're not using any paper or ink at all, but they're doing everything on a Wacom tablet. <laughs> David Mack, though, is Wacom tablet. Yeah. <laughs> Does anyone have, here have a Wacom tablet? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So you guys know what it is. Uh, David Mack, he does all his work still on paper. He does everything on watercolor. So sequential art is a form of expression. It's art. It's big business, and it's really, really fun. And I have here on the table a lot of comic strips, a lot of comic books, some different graphic novels, and I have some Japanese woodblock prints that you can look at also. <laughs> Mm -hmm. there, there are some children's books that combine uh, prose, like a novel, but then the kids jump into a comic book. Yeah. 
And right now, uh, instead of comic book, instead of comic strips and newspapers, there is a whole world of web comics, which is basically newspaper like comic strips, but they're on the web, and the artist will print them every day or every week. <laughs> And comic books can be read online also. There is an app for iPad or for your tablet called Comixology. Where and you can read every comic book now uh, on your tablet, and they actually look better uh, on the phone and the tablet than they do on paper. <laughs> so I am happy to answer any questions about comic books and graphic novels that you have. And, uh, and then I'm going to introduce Ke uh, Kessie and Bella, who are going to talk about a Georgian comic book project. Um, mm, yeah, I have my Superman shirt on also. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone have any questions? Yeah. So when the old comics uh, comic strips are uh, reprinted, uh, do they renew them or are they exactly what we have? Do they make some kind of collections or just reprint it in the same way it is? They just reprint it, really. They, they might add some bonus material at the back, but really they're just reprints. Yeah. Some, if the artist is very famous, they might print it in a larger format. And I have seen instances where the original comic book was in black and white and when they reprint it they uh, they add the color maybe the a lot of times when they f first print it maybe the comic book company didn't or the artist didn't have enough money to do the color Sure. Hello, my question is who is your favorite comic or graphic novel artist? Probably David Mack. <laughs> uh, he's a writer and an artist. I have a lot of favorites, but probably David Mack. Yeah. Do, you, do you like Todd McFarlane? I am not a I'm not a huge Spawn fan, I'll admit. But the thing about comics is like books, everybody has certain interests. So some people like some kind of books, some people like other kinds of books, some people like one kind of comic books, other people like other kind of comic books. <laughs> But everyone's allowed to have their own tastes, right? Yeah. Like when I don't read a lot of manga, but I have I have to admit I have been watching Attack on Titan. <laughs> Dude. Oh, dude. Attack on Titan is awesome. <laughs> um, growing up, I did not read Batman, Superman, Spider Man. I don't know why I didn't read them. When I was growing up, my favorite character was Ghost. By Dark Horse Comics. Hopefully they'll make a movie out of it. <laughs> then my old comic books will be worth a lot more money. 
<laughs> Some old comics can be very, very expensive. When my father was studying at university, he was reading a lot of Green Lantern comics. Green Lantern. He was studying at university. Uh, no, when he was in high school, he read Green Lantern. Sorry. But when he went off to college, my grandma threw all the comics in the trash. Because <laughs> they weren't so thought to be worth anything. Yeah. But now Green Lantern number one is worth a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, hello? Hi. Uh, do you still have old collections of old comics? Well, I was born in 1977, so none of my comics are that old. <laughs> but yeah, all of my comics are in storage in Delaware. <laughs> yeah. I have you tried drawing comics? I have never drawn comics, but I am a writer. Yeah, you're a writer. And okay. do you think it's a great career opportunity nowadays? I think it is. I think if you can create something that's exciting and you can get linked into a television show or a movie, I think it's a very good career opportunity. The nice thing about Georgia is there if you make your own comic book, there's no competition, there's no other comic books. It's a it's a it's a ripe market. It's a it's a perfect market environment. Yeah. This comics are not so popular, and they won't be sold. They're Georgian, so draw on their own, but they cannot popularize. Them because they're not popular, people don't read them. Hmm? Well, there's nothing to read. There's... <laughs> no one's ever tried. <laughs> uh, how would you know? Two cards are interested in the card movie, but the comic services are saying if you're interested, we can we could invite you back and do something about it. Yeah. She's saying that a lot of people are interested in uh, this kind of thing. Cool. There's two other questions back here. That <laughs> like the idea to invite you back. <laughs> they like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we'll answer a few more questions and then I'm going to introduce Cassie. Yeah. Mhm. Mm yeah. Um, there's a new tendency in the web graphic world, in comics, is to use uh, flash games and animations. And what do you think about that? Well, yeah, I mean, animation and 2D art is very popular, and it's a, there's a strong link between comic books and comic art and these flash games and animations. So, um, yeah, there's a, there's a connection. There's like two more two more questions back there. Wait, there was a girl. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Everybody, everybody has, every artist has an account on DeviantArt and every comic book artist, I guarantee you, if you see their name and you go to DeviantArt, you'll, you'll find them. Yeah. Motion comics, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Flipping. 
Yeah, it's getting very popular on YouTube. If you go to YouTube and you type in motion comic, you'll see many, many motion comics. Yeah. This is the future. Maybe it's very motion comics and comic books. It's a different experience. So it's a different experience. I'd just say that. That. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, so I'm not going to be comic subs. I'm not going to be a comic subs. So I don't know. I can't. I don't think. I don't think motion comics will replace comic books. They're different. It's the difference between a movie and a book. It's too different. I'm going to be a comic subs. I'm not going to be a comic subs now. Okay, one more question. Did you have a question? Oh, yeah. Uh, what is the best way to translate your art artist? What uh, she or he wants? Uh, what you want her to draw? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the question is, how do you? How does the writer convey to the artist what to draw? Yeah. So do you know the? Uh, the phrase like women, uh, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Do you guys know this? I like to say that uh, writers, uh, artists are from Mars and writers are from Venus. <laughs> So the writer needs to write a script and send it to the to the artist to give them instructions. And you can you can Google, but uh, there is a comic book script database where you can read examples of comic book scripts. In a comic book script, the writer has to describe every panel. So if this page has this page has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight panels. The writer needs to write a description telling the artist what is on this panel, what is on this panel, what is on this panel, what is on this panel. And the two artists, Margaret, that are on the chart, they are telling me that the two artists are all very well, well, they are on the two artists, they are on the two artists. A comic book script looks very similar, actually, to a movie script. Comic book scenario, Italian chaos, film scenarios. Yeah. So if you want examples, uh, there's lots of examples on the internet. But the U.S. Embassy is now supporting a project to create a Georgian comic book made by students like you. So we are flying out to uh, Two creators, a writer from DC Comics and an artist from Marvel Comics. Mm -hmm. and, and we're providing the opportunity for students like you to go to workshops and learn how to make a comic book and then make a comic book yourself. In a way, we are seeding the project, we're planting the seed, and we hope that afterwards the comic will continue for many, many issues. The project is being run by a group of girls from San Diego State University who are going to talk to you right now.